What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my unit review and builds guide for Samurai Erika, Niffel, Leon and Seth. So Samurai Erika this time around is a green mage flyer with carrying conch as her preferred weapon. This gives her minus one special cooldown and she can also get plus five to all of her stats. She also has partial null follow up built into this weapon so she can neutralize any kind of follow up negation effects. She can also inflict the guard effect on the enemy during the combat. And finally, she has got Guard Smoke built into this weapon. She doesn't really get the damage reduction like Brave Erika and she doesn't have access to Surge Sparrow. So with Steady Impact and this Guard effect in the combat, it's pretty much her way of trying to survive the counterattack of the opponent and then double them and trigger Luna and just nuke them really, really hard. She also has her exclusive skill Moonlight Bangle, which does have the flat one canto built into it which is definitely pretty good with the teleportation of the oath skill because unlike the trace skills it is still going to be triggering when you teleport so that is pretty good for the movement she does have null guard built into it which does increase her nuking potential and then she can do the true damage based on x percent of foe's defense and the x here is going to be depending on your max special cooldown count this is really similar to that of Brave Erika and taking in the opponent's defense is going to be helping you do a lot more damage because on average units are going to be having more defense than they have resistance. So despite being a mage and using foe's defense with this lobby skill, she can still hit pretty hard. And then she comes with easily one of the best tier 4 slot C skills in attack speed oath 4. This skill is so good and so much better than the rouse 4 skills. So now the tier 4 version of the oath skill can work if you're within two spaces of an ally. You no longer need to be, you know, just adjacent to an ally like the tier 3 oath skills. And if you fulfill that criteria, then you can get plus 6 to your attack and speed as the visible buff. And you also get the teleportation and that is just incredible for the mobility. And then finally, you can also get plus 3 attack and speed in combat. So yeah, this skill is so good because not only are we going to be getting the visible buff, but the teleportation is just the cherry on top and so many flying units and infantry units want to have the skill so that they can have that teleportation, especially if you're not running Bradle Catria or some kind of Peony to give you that Otter's buff. And because this can trigger independently if you're just within two spaces of an ally, this means that many times it is going to be a lot more consistent than a menace skill which requires any kind of foe to be within four spaces of the unit. So a lot of units do love this Oath 4 skill and I quickly want to go over some of the best users of Oath 4 skills and how you can try and use this. So units like Duo Dogger can be really good users of this because they are a flying unit and they also use the visible buffs productively with their weapon. And if you run attack speed unity, you can basically protect yourself against the panic and the offensive debuffs, which the oath for buffs might attract. So that is really incredible. And you don't really have to use aerobatics um, with a flying unit to teleport, which is really great. And I think for Summer Claude, this is easily his best lots the option because it is so much more consistent than a mana skill in so many scenarios. And this also allows him to have that teleportation without really sacrificing his sacred seal, which is really important for getting more offenses. So with this Oath 4 skill, he can get the brave effect from his weapon and also get the teleportation. Noah is also an amazing user of this because of having bonus doubler in her weapon. That is basically a teleporting pathfinder, just like Duo Dogger, but on a lesser scale. But obviously, with the bonus doubler, she can still hit pretty hard. And she does have access to that vital Astra. You can also run this on Legendary Mail Byleth, uh, which is really funny because Oath 4 skill here is quite similar to the exclusive skill of uh, Legendary Female Violet. Of course, Legendary Male Violet doesn't really have the tempo skill, and this is still going to be a trade off because you're not going to be able to run Time Pulse and pre charge your Sublime Heaven, but still, this could be a pretty good option for a max investment Violet. Oath 4 skills and its self buffs have really good synergy with any kind of ideal skill, especially if a unit has got something like Dive Bomb. So for Seti, Lewin can definitely make amazing use of this to have the teleportation and activate his ideal skill. And Legendary Lucina has got Future Vision 2, so having that teleportation can really help you use this kind of assist skill. And it can always help you get more offenses, which is really great for a lot of player phase offensive units. 
Now back to Summer Erika. So with this weapon and her exclusive slot, these skills, she can certainly hit pretty hard. But again, she does have her shortcomings and there's a lot of things that she does. And compared to Brave Erika, it's a lot harder for her to survive the counter attacks, especially of some far safe tanks that can retaliate back with the special. Um, you know, Summer Erika doesn't really have that kind of bulk, even though she can have more effective bulk than you think because of the impact skill and the guard effect that she can have with this kit. And her offenses are definitely pretty nice with 39 base attack and 42 base speed. She overall does face competition with Spring Sonia as a green mage flyer in terms of nuking. She does get the true damage and she can definitely hit pretty hard herself. Uh, but as a mage flyer, we recently have got some pretty good units. Summer Thor is also an example, even though she's not as fast as Summer Erika. So overall, Summer Erika is a pretty solid unit, but definitely not too insane. And her fodder is actually really top tier with attack speed Oath 4. As we get more Oath 4 skills, I think we're going to be seeing it a lot more on many units. And like I went over some of the examples, I think it could be a really incredible option for so many flyers and infantry units. Now keep in mind that only flyers and infantry units can have access to the Oath skills, and armors and cavaliers do not have access to this skill. Instead, they have the Rouse 4 skills, where the secondary effect of the Rouse 4 skills are definitely not as good as what we have with the Oath 4 skills. Now if you want to build up Erika, then on a budget you can just give a reposition and have Blade Session and her base kit is going to be doing you fine, but there are definitely other options that you can try out with Erika. I think Windsweep is also an option um, because it allows you for the safety of not getting hit by a counter attack, but still it is going to be making you lose significant amount of power if you take off her Moonlight Bangle, and of course you do not have access to Kanto then. You can also try and run her with Life and Death and Precharge and a UE special like Blazing Wind, so you've probably seen my video with Brave Erika running an AoE build. The idea is pretty similar here. So Moonlight Bangle does scale off with its true damage based on the maximum special cooldown count. So in that sense, the AoE specials can definitely help you. So this kind of build could be useful in Aetherate's offense and mostly useful in summoner duels where she can function as an AoE nuke. But again, she's going to be facing competition in that role with Spring Sonia and especially Duo Thor who has a much, much easier time pre-charging her special compared to Erika who would need some kind of support with Veluria or with Duo Chrome to eventually pre-charge her special. Summer Erika functions the best competitively in something like Summoner Duels. Um, mainly because a lot of the far safe tanks are not going to be running Distant Counter and they're going to be focusing on their survival with any kind of other slotty skills like Distant Defense 4. So in that case, you can try and run this build with Pulse Smoke. So the Guard Smoke and Pulse Smoke make for a really good combo because not only you're going to be smoking these pre-charged specials, but you can also then inflict Guard and make it pretty hard for the units to trigger their special. And Attack Speed Unity can work here, especially to deal with the debuffs. And in the higher echelons of the gameplay, a lot of people are going to be running Sabotage Attack Summer Thor, so the Unity skill can always help you offensively, and Ruptured Sky is always going to be helping you against the far safe dragons like Ascended Edun or Fallen Rhea for example, so getting that extra damage out of Ruptured Sky may win you some of the matches because you're able to kill their far safe tank. Keep in mind the far safe tanks with Hardy Fighter and Deflect Magic are going to be able to completely wall this kind of Summer Erika despite whatever she can bring. But at the very least, even if Summer Erika does not kill the far safe tank, she can at least inflict the Pulse Smoke and the Guard Smoke effect. You can also run her with a max investment build with attack speed catch 4, and you can try and replace uh, the Oath 4 skill with speed resistance hold as an alternate premium option if you want to do that at high investment. Attack speed Oath 4 is still really good in my opinion, but still, this is just an alternate option that I want to feature. And you can also run her in Etherate's defense, especially on a Bridal Catcher team. Again, um, her survival could be hard against many of the far safe tanks, so trying to get the brave effect out of Bridal Catria is going to be helping her just nuke harder and maybe even kill a lot of the far safe tanks, uh, especially with the null guard that she can get. So she can trigger her special on the second hit and she can also get the true damage out of her exclusive skill, so she can just do a lot better with the brave hits instead of trying to survive the far safe tanks and then maybe triggering her Luna on the second hit. You can also run her in Arena with g Duel Flying 4, and because of having a 300 SP Sloppy skill, she's able to score higher than the usual uh, flyers who need this kind of dual skill. Summer Leon is the 4 star focus unit of this banner, and he is a Sword Infantry unit this time around. So he's got Coral Saber Plus, which is easily one of the best inner swords that we have got in the game. 
because it can provide you with plus 5 attack and defense in combat and also gives you a guaranteed follow-up attack in both phases and the condition is actually pretty easy to meet it's not something gimmicky or really hard to get so it's always going to be active in the player phase and in the enemy phase you need to be within two spaces of an ally so this can be really good for units like Summer Leon who don't really have a very high speed stat and this is an amazing option for any kind of slow sword unit. Now as for Summer Leon it is a pretty competitive class to be in the sword infantries and especially when you're going to be having a low speed like this but still he is going to be unique in the aspect where he's going to be having good balanced mixed bulk and he could be compared to I guess Nemesis who is the closest free to play comparison to him. So Nemesis does have the preferred weapon but still it's not really too hot so yeah both of these units are kind of similar but summer leon is the latest unit here but he does take the orbs to plus and merge him and summer leon does bring attack defense ideal 3 and also lull attack defense lull attack defense is definitely gonna be the highlight but unfortunately you cannot really inherit lull attack defense and core world saber at the same time so overall summer leon can basically function as a very high attack and balance mixed bulk sword infantry unit not having a preferred weapon and also being a sword infantry unit does mean that he's going to be facing insane competition but overall he can be a decent option if you do try to plus and merge him. Now Coral Saber Plus is the real uh, amazing thing out of his base kit and it just gives new life to so many sword units even the ones which had preferred weapons because this weapon is pretty much on par or better than a lot of the preferred weapons especially the older ones. So I want to go over some of the options that you can do with this. And as you saw in my summoning session, I did try to get Coral Saber for my plus and Eldigan. And Eldigan and units like him are going to be having really nice, um, you know, time with this kind of weapon where at max investment, they're not going to be all that fast and they have this kind of awkward speed stat. And because Coral Saber can give you guaranteed follow-up attack in both phases, it is going to be an incredible weapon with this kind of mixed phase build. It is also a pretty good option for so many slow infantry uh, sword units because... Um, they had to resort to quick repose basically. He can just run some other sacred seal and sloppy skill and the attack defense bulwark is definitely one of the better options for many of these high defense tanks like Skahawk for example. So this is pretty much going to be one of the best builds that he can run on Skahawk. And for armor units who don't really have a preferred weapon, it can pretty much allow you to run special fighter or hardy fighter in your slot B and you can just try and run attack defense unity or close defense 4. In the slot A. So with that, near save sword armors can function with it. And you can also have um, you know a different kind of use with Coral Saber. We have seen this on slower units here, but even on faster units, this could be helpful because it is pretty much gonna be helping the faster units break through the follow-up negation effects because they can win the speed check against a lot of the slower units who have that follow-up negation and still double them. So in that sense, it can help them and um, you know, it's not going to be like a full not follow up in that sense, but still you can just run a damage reduction skill here in the slot B instead of running null follow up. So definitely a pretty nice option here and someone like uh, Resplendent Lin, who doesn't have a very good preferred weapon, can run it. It does have good synergy with dive bombs, so older units like Pala, who don't have the fastest speed stat, can try and run Coral Saber and just focus on their attack stat and try to double attack with dive bomb. Again, if they're going to be faster than the slower units who have follow-up negation, they're going to be able to double through them. So the dive bomb effect can pretty much give you the guaranteed follow-up attack and pretty much give you the pseudo brave effect. Coral Saber is easily the best weapon for our boy Alphonse here and he's shown here with the bonus stats that he has in Arena. So many people still use Asker Trio in Arena because they are the rotating bonus units. So in that sense, if you are a big Alphonse fan, then this is going to be his new best option. Now as for building up Leon on a budget, you can simply give him attack smoke 3 and have a form skill. I do like the form skill because again it is a mixed phase option just like his weapon and his slotty skill. The natural progression for this kind of um, you know, base kit is going to be with the tier 4 version of the ideal skill and also with the tier 4 version of the smoke skill. So at higher investments this is definitely something that he can run and he does have a super boon in attack so he can definitely hit pretty hard. You can also run him with a max investment distant counter or distance stance build because Leon does have pretty good resistance. Not to mention he also has a super boon in it. So at max investment this is definitely something that he can run. And attack defense bulwark is easily one of his best lobby options 
He already comes with level attack defense. So if you want to have a different slot B option that is actually good, then Bulwark skill can work because it can give you the obstruct and also the self healing. So you can just run a breath skill pretty easily instead of trying to run mystic boost. You can also try and focus on his melee matchups if you don't really want to run distant stance on him. So attack defense unity is going to be a pretty nice mixed phase option. And unlike the ideal skill, it can give you an altering effect which can protect him from the debuffs, especially to his attack because his attack can be pretty high. And with Summer Leon, you want to try and run attack smoke 4 so that you don't really get doubled and that is going to be helping him as a tank for his longevity. You can also use him in Aether Raid's Chaos as a... Um, you know melee specialist especially now that we have the bulwark skill so with sturdy stance 3 you can get the guard effect which is going to be helping him a lot for tanking and you can just pair this up with a far safe tank and this can work in the chaos season because you're only allowed to use one save unit so there a melee unit who can take on the melee matchups is going to be helping and then the far safe tank can basically protect your team from getting sniped by some other you know range units and the bulwark skill on this kind of melee unit can give you the obstruct and finally, if you do want to use him in Arena, then this is the build that you can run. Distance Stance is going to be really helpful for getting rid of the um, Ninja Corrins that you're going to be facing all the time. And he definitely has a much easier time surviving Ninja Corrin compared to so, so many of the Sword Infantry units. Summer Niffle is a colorless Cavalier this time, and she has got Chilled Breath as her preferred weapon. This gives her minus one special cooldown, and she can get plus six attack and speed in the combat. She also gets the full null follow up, which is really, really good for the player phase. And if she's got five or more speed than the opponent, then she can get the fire sweep effect. So this weapon is a bit more selfish in that regard compared to normal version of Niffle, who can inflict the flash status. But this version of Niffle can basically get the fire sweep effect for herself. And just like the original Niffle, she does have Domain of Ice for supporting herself and her allies. She doesn't really need Domain of Ice, um, you know, as much as her allies because in the player phase, she can easily attack the enemy and not get counterattacked, especially with her amazing base speed of 43 and also having Super Boon in it. She also has good attack stat at base 38. Now, unfortunately, because of being a dragon, she doesn't have access to a lot of these skills like Gale Force, but still she can be a pretty strong unit in the player phase, especially with the null follow-up and the fact that she's able to double pretty much most of the units and not really get counter-attacked. Null Counter Disrupt is no longer that common of a skill and it's even less common on melee units. So this allows her to be a pretty strong nuke at the melee range. She also has the Speed Resistance near Trace now, which can be a good option for units who target resistance or are player phase dragons just like Niffle. Overall, Summer Niffle is pretty solid and she does do something unique, which not a lot of Cavaliers can do because she can hit on the magical side and pretty much get this conditional fire speed effect while having now follow up and also providing the domain of ice support which is really good but i do like the normal version of niffle a lot more because you can inflict the flash status and because normal version of niffle is also pretty fast you can simply run wind sweep and you know just safely attack the enemy and still get the flash effect to support your overall team which is going to be really good for something like ether Raid's defense but still, this kind of Summer Niffle is not to be underestimated for her fire power. So her base kit is quite enough. You don't really need to invest too heavily into her. You can just run Blade Session so that she can have good player phase and get the extra offenses. But if you want to run her in Ether Raid's defense, where I think she does a pretty good job, then you could run her with a double Poison Strike build. This might seem a bit goofy, but if you do remember my Ether Raid's defense replays from the older days, then you do remember my Fire Sweep Wrath with double Poison Strike and how effective he was. Now, unfortunately, we got Ascended Fjorm, so my Wrath kind of got dunked, but still, Summer Niffle can do a fantastic job with this kind of build and really annoy the near safe tanks, even if she's not able to kill them. So the double Poison Strike is going to be really annoying for them, and Domain of Ice support is always helpful for Ether Raid's defense teams, especially in the Anima season where a lot of people are going to be safe tanking with Elamine and their, you know, far safe and near safe tanks. So there she can be a pretty good unit. And if you want to invest a bit more into her, then Lull Speed Resistance from the Divine Code section is going to be a pretty good investment here so that she can hit pretty hard. And her best boon is going to be the Speed Super Boon, which is going to be helping her get the Conditional Fire Sweep effect. And you can also ascend her attack because she's mainly going to be functioning as more of an offensive player phase unit. 
Somerset is the Tempest Trial reward out of this batch and he's an Axe Cavalier this time with Seahorse Axe Plus as his inheritable weapon. So this is basically the Axe version of the Coral Saber which Summer Leon has got. So these are relatively free to play weapons and they are just, you know, easily one of the best inheritable weapons that we have got. Especially for the Axe units, there are a lot of slow Axe units which can make amazing use out of this weapon. As for Seth himself, he does have pretty good offenses with base 40 attack and base 38 speed and he does come with speed defense catch 3 and also the first Grail Pool Rally Up skill which can be useful if you're trying to you know, fodder off the plus version of the skill or even if you're trying to run the skill for Aether Raid's defense just for the AI manipulation. Comparing him to the other existing free to play Axe Cavaliers, you can see that he is going to be having more speed than Plagian Mill Chris and he does have more attack as well. So overall he's going to be nice Axe Cavalier but the unfortunate problem is that uh, we have got so many Axe Cavaliers in this year like uh, you know Groom Roy and also Summer Dimitri who is incredibly powerful. And there are a lot of Axe Cavaliers with preferred weapon who can just do a more unique role than Seth. Um, so yeah, not having a preferred weapon and being so much, you know, sudden competition in the Axe Cavaliers can definitely not incentivize many people to invest into him. Having said that, he can still function as a nice merge project if you're a big fan of him and his offenses are definitely pretty good with those two super boons. You can also use him for the fodder of Seahorse Axe Plus and like I said, this is gonna be a better weapon than a lot of the actual preferred weapons and that is the case with Legendary Edelgard as well. Legendary Edelgard definitely has a hard time keeping up with the summer version but she can definitely have easier time with Seahorse Axe Plus which can give her just a better player phase because she's actually able to double attack with this weapon without really sacrificing anything on her base kit and she can just run her usual Heavy Blade 4 and Quick and Pulse build. Assault Troop is also an option that you can run for a high investment Edelgard so until she gets some kind of weapon refine and a remix um, having used Legendary Edelgard so much, I feel like Seahorse Axe Plus is pretty much the better weapon to run here over her preferred weapon. Which is really sad, but still, at least you have more viability now. And you can also run this on uh, Legendary Hector with Ostia Pulse too. And, you know, Legendary Hector can be a pretty nice unit to be used in a Gale Force team, in Aetherate's Chaos or in the Aetherate's Offense, because he has got that tactic Time Pulse with his Ostia Pulse, which is really good. So his own Gale Force is at 4 cooldown, and with Seahorse Axe Plus, he can get the guaranteed follow-up attack, and still trigger Heavy Blade because of not really compromising on his attack stat, and get the Gale Force off, while also supporting his allies. Like I went over with Coral Saber Plus, a lot of the slower axe um, armors who don't really have a preferred weapon can use this weapon to open up their slot B skill to be running Special Fighter or Hardy Fighter. So if you have a Flame Emperor or Dedu or Winter Chrom at Plus and Merge, then this could be a pretty nice option to be run with the Unity skill. This could also be run on a unit like Camilla who has definitely not aged up too well in terms of her speed. So she does have this kind of awkward speed where she's not the slowest but she's also not the fastest. So pretty much with this kind of weapon you can uh, use its auto follow up to bypass a lot of the follow up negation effects. And by getting the attack smoke 4 on her you can try and stop the follow up attacks of the enemies which can help you um, in terms of tanking. Seahorse Axe Plus can be a good option especially with a Pegasus Flight build. Despite how weird this build looks it can still be functional with this kind of Camilla and this kind of gen 1 unit uh, who hasn't really had the most amount of speed. And eventually she's going to be getting a resplendent version so she can function even better with this kind of build. Um, and a slow infantry axe unit like Balthus, Basilio, um, you know Mustafa, so many of the other options can function with the Seahorse Axe Plus and the Bulwark build. Bulwark is going to be nice for getting that healing and also for the obstruct. And then an Axe Cavalier like Violent who has really high attack stat can make good use of Seahorse Axe Plus similar to how uh, Resplendent Eldigan makes use of Coral Table Plus which I went over. For building up Seth on a budget you can definitely try and run a Link skill or even try and run Guard. So Guard can be definitely helpful in both phases and it is available on Luthier. You can also run Attack Defense Catch as a Sacred Seal again a mixed phase option. And on low investment, he can just try and defense refine this because he's not going to be as fast. But if you're going to be investing into him with high investment or max investment, then Windsweep could be an option. So the interaction between Windsweep and Seahorse Axe is that if he has got 5 more speed than the opponent, then he can make the double attack and still not get counter-attacked. 
so definitely not going to be working against really super fast enemies but can work against these slower opponents. If you want to invest into his speed fully then Springy Axe Plus is a really good option at max investment and instead of running Wind Sweep you can just run the better option and speed defense near trace and just run the solo skill and stack up his speed completely. Springy Axe also provides you with more offenses and can also give you the attack and speed debuff neutralization. You can also run him with Shuriken Cleaver Plus just to get the true damage and run the player phase build with Surge Sparrow and Flow Guard. Flow Guard being really helpful here to quad attack a lot of the enemies by getting that partial not follow up. You can also run a mixed phase build with Seahorse Axe Plus. So the idea is to pretty much go in, trigger the smoke force skill and then in the enemy phase you can have the follow up negation which is really helpful here. Finally if you want to run him in arena then Springy Axe Plus is an option. You can also run Seahorse Axe if you want to because arena can have some insanely insanely fast opponents but usually those fast opponents are going to be having the null follow up so that's why Springy Axe I feel like is going to be a option that you can also run. Make sure to share this video with your friends if they're trying to build up any of these units and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did then make sure to leave a like and a comment and if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly by using super thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more fave videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as our mats when you compare to Seahorse Axe. So with that said I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.